Hi. Today I'm going to talk about API 580 um, exam and I'm going to use the API website so if you search it in the internet um, and type in API ICP individual certification program you see API ICP website and if you click on the website um, we'll see the individual certification program page now if you want to go and see the certification you have to click here on the button and then there is a drop down window and choose api 580 risk-based inspection and then you can see uh, all the information that you need to know this exam can be done either in person at a prometric test center or by remote proctoring or by remote exam. So that means uh, the time of application, you have to uh, choose, uh, once you choose the date, you have to mention that you wish to do a remote proctoring if you want to do it from the comfort of your home or office. Uh, and the same rules apply basically here. Uh, when you go to Prometric Test Center at the time of exam, they'll ask you uh, about ID verification, it should be a government issued ID, uh, photo ID such as uh, a driving license or a password, you should be in Latin characters and it should be valid. If it's not valid, they wouldn't, uh, they refuse you entry. Uh, and then they ask you some security questions like your date of birth, email address, and uh, look at your glasses. You cannot carry anything with you, uh, they will provide you with a locker. And when you do remote proctoring, you have to, you will be watched by an invigilator through the camera on your desktop, laptop. And you are asked to turn around your desktop or laptop to, so invigilator, invigilator can see that there is nothing on the table. Nobody can enter the room or you're not allowed to leave the room without the permission of invigilator. And every time you check out, like going to drink some water or use the toilet, once you come in, same security uh, provisions is applied, like they do again the ID verification check, etc. Well, having said that, let's see what you need to study. So, the only document that you need to study according to API is uh, API RP Risk Based Inspection 3rd edition 2016. This is uh, 3 hours 15 minutes long. There are 90 questions, um, of which 80 are scored. The remaining 10 are pre-test and are not scored. The reason is that um, API, when they're designing new question, is designed by a news uh, by a subject matter expert, and uh, is checked by three other SMEs, and uh, they will see if the the question design is it clear enough or is it and also is it something that uh, api 580 space inspection uh, inspector should know that uh, so once that is passed that test uh, it, it including the question data bank as non-scored question and then um, again they want to see that uh, the statistic for passing for answering correctly that so was it too difficult was it too easy uh, is it has it been challenged by candidates or not and then it come a scored question uh, and because api keeps on revising the questions so the data bank you if you fail um, on reattempting the exam you will never receive the same set of questions there might be like seven, eight hundred questions that they choose from and they make sure that you don't receive the same set of questions. So three hours, 15 minutes long uh, for 90 questions. That's roughly uh, two minutes per question. So you should keep the pace at the exam. Uh, so that means like 45 questions uh, or uh, every one and a half hours. So that comes like around 30 questions per hour roughly and then if you allow another 15 20 minutes to review any flight of question that you flagged off where you are in doubt or and review all question um, that would be wise so if you are uh, 
spending more than a minute, minute and a half on a question and still you, you're in doubt of and just uh, take the one that is uh, to the best of your knowledge would be the right answer, flag it off and then at the end you can come back to it up the remaining time and uh, choose the best answer that you could. But always answer them because there is no negative marking so you're increasing your chances. There is an exam tutorial here that uh, before the exam starts you'll see something like this and this is 10 minutes long or uh, if you end it earlier you have to uh, sign up a non-disclosure agreement that you are not going to divulge any question that you see during the exam to others uh, and uh, it also explains um, how the buttons work and uh, you can see your name here so that's you and the remaining time you'll see here on the top and the progress here on the top as well top right hand corner in the middle you'll see the timing and you see the number of questions you're actually attempting you can jump from question to question or you can just use the next button and go to the next question so using the mouse is the same as uh, using it on your laptop uh, as usual. Uh, any question you have not attended is actually uh, turn color. Uh, so you, you know which question you have answered and which question you have not. And if there is a long question, it always says this page records scrolling so you need to go down. Uh, the remaining time as I said is at the top. And flagging question if you click on the flag uh, it turn, change color so at the end you can see which question you have flagged or you can see on the left hand corner on the corner which question have been flagged and if you click on the uh, uh, one of the possible answer it changes color so you know that that is the answer you have chosen and you can use a calculator on the desktop if it is required you don't, I don't believe you need this. Um, so this is a calculator you can use on the desktop. Uh, if you want to highlight the text, you can click on that and drag it. So I highlight if you want to zoom in. And striking options, if you put the mouse on that answer that you think is wrong, absolutely wrong, so you can right click and it will strike it off so you can uh, zoom in on the possible right answer and then uh, you can always uh, review press the review all button and or you can filter it by an attempted question or the attempted question a flag of question as you can see here they have got different colors so make sure absolutely sure that you have answered all of them regardless whether you have a clue or not uh, that increase your chances because there is no negative marking you can also leave a comment on the caption for each question but remember that this is coming off your time so the minute the time starts um, keeps clicking uh, until you run out of time so the time that if you may need to leave the examination room to use the toilet or I want to drink water or for whatever reason you then at the time will not pause or stop uh, so the exam finishes unless you run out of time or you click the finish section and uh, they will ask you once again that you're sure to do that just to make sure that you have not done it uh, inadvertently and uh, and then the exam completes or if you run out of time so once you've gone through this, it will ask you whether you want to start the exam at any moment. So that's the moment when you actually see the question papers. And you, you click the start button here. Uh, go through this before the exam so, you know, you're more familiar and you're at ease when you're looking at all these buttons. Uh, the qualification needs is if you have an API uh, qualification to sit for the exam if you have an api 510 570 or 653 certification you automatically qualify otherwise um, you should be either an engineer bs 
with one year experience, any experience in petrochemical industry, or if you have a two year university degree, it's two years. If you have a high school diploma, it's three years. If you have no formal education, you should have a minimum of five years of experience as a pre qualification to sit for this exam. This certification you can do uh, every three years and uh, up to 90 days before the expiry of your certification and up to 90 days after the expiry subject uh, to a late application fee of $150 that they call grace day, uh, 90 day grace period. You can find um, the more useful information here, like how to find the inspector, frequently asked question, how the exam is scoring is a scaled exam. So roughly 70% is the post mark, but uh, in order to standardize the level of difficulty, the scale uh, each exam. So it's roughly say 69 to 71% depending uh, on the level of difficulty of the exam. Uh, so it's fair for everybody, regardless of which exam you have sit for. Then you can apply by clicking this button and you go there, you uh, open a free account, uh, you register and uh, you upload your certification and your experience and then fill in your experience sheet, pay the fees and provide two references and the API bit contact those two references and once they verify your experience, uh, they'll send you an email authorization and a link to Prometric. Prometric is subcontracted by API to hold the exam. So, as soon as you receive your email authorization, make absolutely sure that you have selected the slot because Prometric work on first come for serve basis and if uh, you fail to do so and do it, you know, too late, then there is no uh, uh, slot for you to attend your exam and uh, if, if for any reason your inability to reserve a slot or anything you have to reschedule and that's as good as failing the exam and once you apply make sure that you actually seriously intend to do the exam on that three weeks window that is select you're selecting so once you select the window you cannot change it again if you want to change it uh, you have to apply for rescheduling pay the fees and then attend the next window or some other windows and uh, that's as good as failing also because if you're going to fail also you have to reschedule let's see what are the fees here and schedules or schedules so for 2022 uh, the next available one is So there is nothing, oh, the next available one is December 2, 2023. This three weeks exam window and the application deadline is September 30th. Okay, so, and for the year 2022, you can do for, apply for 2023, six, seven, eight months later, you can book now and uh, say for 2023 is, uh, the first exam of 2020 is April 7 to 28 and the next one is August 11 to September and the last one is December 22 and the deadline is here. There are three times you can do an exam uh, from your initial exam. Uh, you should pass the exam between a year uh, or four consecutive tests exam you have to you can do or one year, whichever is earlier. So um, if you fail the exam or you could not attend the exam and for any reason you reschedule, uh, then uh, you have to pay the reschedule fee and attend the exam. If after a year you still have not passed, then you have to sub apply, submit a fresh application and pay the full fees and uh, do it all over again. Uh, so the initial certification fee is $365 for non-member and $315 for API member. Now remember that your company should be an API member. API does not give individual membership. So it's $365 for initial certification. For recertification, 
every three years you pay $260 and uh, for rescheduling you pay $150 if you fail the exam or you don't want to attend to the selected exam window or you didn't show up for any reason rescheduling $150 and recertification if there is a late application fee after your expiry up to 90 days you can still apply for recertification but you have to pay $150 so I think we covered most of what uh, is about 580 there is useful links here about re remote testing and uh, the other uh, important thing like statistics you can uh, see what is a pass rate around 50 percent uh, so that's all you need to know about api exam and application and certification fees schedules and cost thank you for listening and see you soon